Number 84. Predict the electron pair geometry and the molecular structure of each of the following ions. Or molecules, because some of them aren't ions, but that's besides the point. We did a lot of questions so far, how to do electron pair geometry and molecular structure. So this one will kind of be like a quick inversion. Just know that in order to do this, you have to find out your Lewis structures first. So hopefully you guys can have the confidence and know how to draw a correct Lewis structure. But if not, don't worry. You can always go back to number 40 in this chapter to start your Lewis structure journey. And then I promise you that you guys will be able to draw Lewis structures. Here, I'm not going to teach you how to do them, um, but you could always check your answers with what I got and see if it's the same. Okay. So for 84, for A, they want us to find the electron pair geometry of H3O+. So the first thing is we gotta draw the Lewis structure. In this case, it's oxygen in the middle surrounded by the three hydrogens. And if this is done properly, you will have a lone pair on the oxygen. Since there's a charge, we should bracket it and put a positive. Now we gotta figure out the electron pair geometry. Always go by the electron pair geometry first. I'll put the dot down here. And then the molecular structure should come next. So in order to get an electron pair geometry, I'll put it up here, electron pair geometry, goes by how many total things are surrounding, surround, something like that, <laughs> uh, your central atom. I'll just put CA, all right? So things can be two uh, things. You could either have bonds or you could have lone electrons. So a lone pair. And remember, a lone pair is two dots, all right? So in order to get your electron pair geometry, you just count how many things surround your, surrounding the, your central atom, all right? And the things represent electron pairs. I just like to say things because it's easier, but just know that that's what an electron pair is. It's bonds and lone pairs. Just know that your electron pair geometry will only be one out of these five. All right, so this is where you get your electron pair geometries, but then when you do your molecular structure, it could be these five, but then it could also span into this region as well. All right, and the difference is, is that electron pair geometry is total things, as opposed to molecular structure just focuses on the lone pairs in the central atom. All right, so that's why it's easier to say how many total things you have and then just see how many lone pairs. So. For H3O+, plus, you look at the central atom, which is oxygen. How many total things are surrounding oxygen? Well, you got a single bond, that's one, two, three, and then a lone pair. So in this case, if we count them, there's four total things, right? And that will tell you your electron pair geometry. And four total things, four is tetrahedral. So in this case, your electron pair geometry would be tetrahedral. I'm gonna put my E PGs on this side and molecular structure MS on this side for the first column. Then we'll figure it out from there. So electron pair geometry for A would be tetrahedral. All right. And now we focus in on just the lone pairs because that's what your molecular structure is based off of. So in your central atom, you look at the central and you have only one lone pair. So you still look at the four things, but now you're in one lone pair territory. So this would technically be trigonal pyramidal. They say trigonal pyramid here, but I was always taught trigonal pyramidal. So that's what I'll just put. So for the first one, it would be trigonal pyramidal. This might be a little cramped, but you guys will bear with me, right? All right, so A is done. B, PCl4 minus. So you could pause the video and try to do the Lewis structure. You should get phosphorus in the middle, surrounded by four chlorines. So I'll just put four around here. Each chlorine should have three lone pairs to give it the octet rule. And in this case, you're going to have one lone pair on the phosphorus, so I'll just put it here. Okay, okay. 
All right, so central atom is phosphorus. So let's first find the electron pair geometry by counting how many total things. There's one bond here, two, three total bonds, four total bonds, that's four things, and then one lone pair. So this has five total things. Five for electron pair geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. So that would be for B, trigonal bipyramidal. And then to find your molecular structure, you just look at how many lone pairs. Over here, there's just one lone pair. So you're still in five world, but now you go to one lone pair, and now we're down to sawhorse, or you could call it seesaw. It doesn't matter to me. I usually call it seesaw. So that's what PCL4 minus is, seesaw, for the methyl geometry. And just know that it's a negative, so technically we should bracket this off and just give the negative one. And B's done. C, SNCl3 minus. So your Lewis structure should have a tin in the middle, SN, surrounded by three chlorines, one, two, I'll put the other one down here. Each chlorine should have the three pairs to give it the octet, so that, 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 that. Okay. And then in this case, you're going to have one lone pair. There's a charge, so you have to bracket it and put the negative one. Now we focus on the central atom. The central atom has one bond, two, three, and one lone pair. So it's a total of four things. Four is tetrahedral, right? So that's the electron pair geometry. The total is tetrahedral. But now the specific molecular structure only focuses on the lone pair. And in this case, this only has one lone pair. So four and one, we already did this one, trigonal pyramidal. Lone pair. And yeah, so just like A, trigonal pyramidal for C. And now let me erase A through C. If you needed, you could just pause the video, but I'm just going to erase this just so I have more room. Okay. D, BrCl4 minus. So Lewis structure is bromine in the middle, surrounded by four chlorines. One, two, three, four. Just like before, each chlorine should have those three lone pairs to give it the octet. And then in this case, let's see, four, six, so it should have two lone pairs if we did the, the Lewis structure properly. It has a negative charge, so we just have to bracket it and put a minus one, or you could just leave it as a negative. And now let's look. Bromine is the central. How many total things are around bromine? It has one bond, two, three, four bonds, and two lone pairs, one, two over there. So a total of six things. So now we're dropping down all the way to here, and your electron pair geometry would be octahedral. So that would be octahedral. And now let's just figure out the uh, molecular structure. In here, you have one lone pair and then another lone pair over here. So this would be a total of two lone pairs. So six and two lone pairs is square planar. So now we're over here. And that's the molecular structure for BRCL4, square planar. Okay, moving on. See, these aren't that bad, right? But you see how it always comes from knowing your Lewis structure. ICL3, iodine in the middle, surrounded by three chlorine. I'll put one Cl, two Cl, three Cl. All the chlorines have to have the octet, so they should have three lone pairs around them. And then iodine, let's see, one, two, three, should have two lone pairs if we do it properly. Uh, no bond, uh, no charge here, so we don't need to bracket it. So we look at the central atom. How many total things? One, two, three, four, five, because there's two pairs. So five things. Electron pair geometry would be in the five, which is trigonal bipyramidal. 
Now I'm going to, for this column, I will say, oop, I will say electron pair geometry and then molecular structure for these three. So electron pair geometry for E would be the five things. So that's trigonal bipyramidal. Oops, sorry that I went over the line, but that's okay. And then how many lone pairs? Well, there's one lone pair here and another lone pair here. So that's two lone pairs. So five and two were dropped down to T-shape. So T-shape, and that's your molecular structure. E is done. I'm going to erase to do the final two. So if you just need a little bit more, you could just pause the video. Okay. And now let's go on to F, X, E, F4. You have xenon in the middle, surrounded by four fluorine. One, two, three, four. Each fluorine should have the octet, so that means six total electrons around each. And then, let's see, we got four. Five, six, seven, eight. So there should be two lone pairs if the Lewis structure is done properly. We look at the central. Xenon has one, two, three, four, five, six things going on here. So six things, like we said before, was octahedral. So that's its electron pair geometry. And then how many lone pairs? There's one lone pair here. There's another lone pair here. So that's a total of two lone pairs. So six and two, we drop down to, just like we had before, square planar. And that's its molecular structure. Last but not least, G, S, F, two. Sulfur in the middle, surrounded by two fluorines, each with a single bond, two lone pairs in the middle, and three lone pairs around each fluorine. We look at the central atom, which is sulfur. There's one bond, two, three things, and four things. So we have four things. Four is tetrahedral. So that's the electron pair geometry. And now we have one lone pair up top, another lone pair down here. So that's two lone pairs. So four and two is bent or angular, but usually we just call it bent. So there you go. That's the molecular structure. And 84 is done. All these are done. Awesome job, guys. So if you want more practice, you could always see the couple of questions before. And there's more practice coming up. So hang tight and we will do them together. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you want to help the channel, click subscribe. If you like this video, you could press the like button, leave us a comment down below. Thank you so much. I look forward to helping you some more and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.